What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out Roman Reigns SmackDown return. WWE fan got kicked out of Monday Night Raw. Other huge WWE leaks, uh, stars were also kicked out, and other wrestling related news. Now, initially, I wasn't gonna check this video out. If anything, I was gonna check it out off camera, but I've seen a few of y'all hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Instagram in the DM saying y'all wanted me to check out this particular WrestleMania video. So, that's what I'm gonna do for y'all. It's a late upload, but y'all wanted it. I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and check it out. So we're gonna see what WrestleMania has to say. Appreciate all love and support on the channel. Let's get right into it, man. It is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of the Red Brand, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Roman Reigns' return to SmackDown. Can't wait, can't Bad wait. Blood main event been leaked. An update on a WWE star retiring. A WWE fan kicks out of Raw, an emotional night for the Wyatt Six, and yep. much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. As always, we won't recap the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, A we lot start of off good, with the good is number opinion. one, Judgment Day 3.0. Well, the Judgment Day isn't going anywhere. Fans who wondered whether the group was history after Dominic Mysterio and Finn Balor's respective mm -mm. betrayals of Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest at SummerSlam got their answer last night. The Judgment Day has tweaked its membership, and while we don't know if this version will compare to the previous one, the WWE wisely understands that the group still has gas in the tank to continue. For sure. More important, it's a great way to spotlight talent like JD McDonough and Carlito, who will likely be sidelined if left on their own. Number 2. Rhea and Damian Strike Back Rhea Ripley and the Damian Priest are much to be angry about after the events of Saturday's PLE, so it was no surprise to see them looking for payback on Liv Morgan, Mysterio, and Finn Balor. The WWE played this out well, showing mm -hmm. the babyfaces getting a smattering of payback and teasing fans for a payoff at a PLE. Number 3. WWE Teasing New Direction for Sami and Jay. Yep. Are Sami Zayn and Jey Uso going to help out Roman Reigns deal with Solo mm -hmm. Sokoa's bloodline? While that's only speculation on our part, some fans believe that last night's dialogue between Sami Zayn and Jey Uso foreshadowed the two reuniting as a tag team and possibly even helping out Roman Reigns. Do you think we're reading too much into that one? Number 4. Bronze. I don't think we are. I didn't mention it on my Monday Night Raw review, but that is that is definitely something that they're planting seeds. Because right now, Jay's not doing much of nothing. And I know um, Sammy's supposed to have a two out of three falls for the Intercontinental Championship next week on Monday Night Raw. That should be really good. But I do not see Sammy reclaiming the Intercontinental Championship. I do think down the road, they are going to align themselves with with the bloodline the og bloodline will be back with roman sammy jay and jimmy man i think that's that is uh it is uh on the way and i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to it so we'll see how it plays out but i think they are planting those seeds to read destroy seth the wwe has booked bronson this was good consistently since his raw debut giving him momentous wins one week only to follow up with him losing to people he should have beaten mm -hmm. nonetheless reed's actions made sense as he told adam pierce he was looking to make a name for himself and he did he by did. annihilating seth rollins on one hand reed's attack might seem repetitive as it's the same thing Bron breaker did getting opportunities by destroying several raw superstars yeah. However, the case can also be made that Reed saw Braun's success and decided to emulate it. Yeah. The biggest question now is whether Reed will get a sustained push or sink down to the mid card after feuding with Seth. One thing is clear, the WWE managed to put Seth vs CM Punk on the back burner for a while thanks to Reed's attack on the Visionary. And that was the whole purpose too. I didn't mention this last night, but that was the whole purpose because right there at that moment, CM Punk and Seth, they're ready to destroy each other but drew got cm punk's attention and this happened so you know seth is going to be focusing on barnes and reed rather than cm punk you want to keep that feud away from each other it looked like they were gonna maybe do a triple threat match but i'm glad they're keeping them separate for now we're going to get that feud the question is when it'll probably be after the drew mcintyre situation drew and cm punk once they're done that may be the next program or they may wait till maybe the royal rumble or after the royal rumble and set that up so we will see but it's good that they did that we can still wait and build that seth and cm punk feud up at a later date because that's going to cook too number five drew versus seth versus punk promo mcintyre rollins and punk continue to be on the master classes in promos as seen by last night's work 
Punk tapped into the fans' love for him before Seth Rollins showed up and challenged him. And not to be outdone, McIntyre patted himself on the back for defeating Punk, then taunted him by showing he still has Punk's friendship bracelet, triggering Punk and letting fans know that McIntyre vs Punk is not over. It's not Number over. Number 6, Randy vs Gunther, the perfect defense. Mm -hmm. What brilliant booking as the WWE set things up for Gunther's first world championship defense, pitting him against 14-time world champion Randy Orton. The WWE used strong storyline continuity by playing off Gunther's controversial King of the Ring finish mm -hmm. where Orton had a shoulder up when the three count was made, mm -hmm. establishing why the two men have unfinished business. Orton's promo even referenced Triple H's past remarks that mm -hmm. the WWE Universe deserves an Orton vs Gunther Part 2. Yes. Although Gunther's promo skills are still lacking, Orton helped make this seem like a big deal. For Wilder fans in Berlin cheer Gunther what did he say? Did he say his promo skills are still lacking? Promo skills are still lacking. Although Gunther's promo skills are still lacking, wouldn't help make. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. Come on, WrestleMania. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't think his. We can agree to disagree here. I do not think Gunther's promo skills are lacking. I think it fits him perfectly. He doesn't have to be the savant on the microphone. He says what he needs to say. He gets his point across. And it works. You believe everything he says because it seems like he believes what he says. It doesn't have to be crazy. He's the perfect wrestling villain. The foreigner that is really good and you don't want to admit it that he's that good. But he is and he knows it. It works. He doesn't have to do too much. I think this is I think his promo abilities match his character perfectly. And I, I and I appreciate it. Make this seem like a big deal. But will the fans in Berlin cheer Gunther as much as Randy Orton? Whatever happens, fans will also watch the match closely to see how it ties in what looks to be an inevitable program between Randy Orton and Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Number 7. Excellent debut for the Wyatt Six The Wyatt Six debut was an unqualified success. Joe Gacy, Eric Rowan and Dexter Loomis wrestle like the powerhouses they are against opponents who were portrayed as a legitimate threat. The match also suggested that the group won't display the same supernatural invulnerability mm -hmm. that The Fiend did, a concern that many fans had before this match. Number 8, Team Forehead vs Damage Control looks to be good. Shayna Baszler, what? Sunday Deville and Zoe Stark have quickly become a trio not to be trifled with. What did he call them? Wait a minute, did he call the studs Team, team Forehead versus Damage Control? <laughs> That's funny. That, <laughs> I, I wrestle Avia. Damage control looks to be good. Shayna Baszler, Sonya Deville, and Zoe Stark have quickly become a trio not to be trifled with, as seen by their latest beatdown, this time on Damage Control's Dakota Kai. It'll be interesting to see how Damage Control counters the group's MMA orientated offense, and also whether the WWE turns at Damage Control babyface. And Odyssey Jones' debut. Yep. Odyssey Jones' main roster debut was well played as he looked strong taking out the AOP and his arrival furthered the tension between New Day members Kofi Kingston and Xavier mm -hmm. Woods. While Woods was happy to get back up against the Final Testament's numbers game, it was clear he would have liked Kofi cluing him in on the big man's arrival. Mm -hmm. uh, two questions come to mind now. Will Woods and Kingston work out their issues? And if so, will Odyssey Jones be able to work as their partner without angering fans who still miss Biggie? Mm -hmm. Whatever the case, after 411 days, he's finally made his debut on Raw. <laughs> that was good. What about the bad? Is Sheamus versus Ludwig Kaiser. Did the WWE Universe need to see yet another match between Sheamus and Ludwig Kaiser? Although the match was all about Sheamus versus Pete Dunne, the WWE should have booked the Celtic Warrior against someone else. At the same time, it needs to put Ludwig into a program where he doesn't seem like a fill-in who is used when the WWE writers are short of time or just plain lazy. And there was nothing downright up. I, I enjoyed their match. I definitely did, in my personal opinion. So Ugly. This rule was a perfect follow-up to a PLE, building off the excitement from the show while still using it to build momentum for what lies ahead. The undercard was solid, and even matches like Awesome Truth vs. A-Town Down Under and New Day vs. Final Testament were effective for storyline purposes and entertaining fans with in-ring action. Dare we say that this was the second best Raw of the year? What do you guys think? Let us it know a, in the comments down really below. Raw. Now let's move on to the news. Really good Raw. Exceptional. <laughs> Our first story looks at Roman Reigns' return to SmackDown. Mm, can't wait. On top of today's news, it's time to batten down the hatches as Roman yep. Reigns is now scheduled to appear on the 9th August SmackDown. Reigns, who returned at SummerSlam, will undoubtedly have plenty to say as he addresses Solisakoa's attempt to replace him as a mm -hmm. tribal chief. Fans will also be curious to see if Roman brings anyone to help him deal with Solo's advantage in allies. Do you think this could also be the return of Paul Heyman? Mm. Next up, WWE Bad Blood main event leaked. 
The WWE's Bad Blood PLE is returning in October, and now a new report from WRKD Wrestling states that WWE has decided on its main event. Mm -hmm. CM Punk vs Drew McIntyre yep. in a Hell in a Cell match is currently planned as main event of October's PLE Bad Blood. The WWE apparently delayed Seth Rollins vs Punk by throwing Rollins into a program with Bronson Reed. This gives McIntyre and Punk to finish their feud, which thankfully didn't end at SummerSlam. McIntyre vs Punk needs a stipulation for its rematch, and Hell in a Cell just seems perfect to end their blood perfect. feud. Perfect. Next up, Eric Rome can't fucking wait. Hopefully, we get something at um Bash in Berlin to tie it up, so it's you know one one between these guys, and then the final match, Hell in a Cell. Oh, that's gonna be so fun, bro. And we better get some blood. <laughs> and pays tribute to Brody Lee. The Wyatt mm -hmm. Six debut featured some exciting in ring action as well as a touching tribute to the late great Mr. Brody Lee. During the bout, the Wyatt Six's Eric Rowan did Brody's Yeah, Yeah, Yeah before hitting a slingshot sent in on Chad Gable. Next up, an emotional night for the Wyatt Six. Mm -hmm. The Wyatt Six also had an emotional display after Raw went off the air. The group hugged each other I in the ring on, on what was a special night in more ways than one. You may recall that the Wyatt family debuted in Baltimore on July 8th, 2013. That's crazy. Last night's show was in Baltimore, which made the Wyatt Six's in-ring debut so special. Next up, an update on the WWE star retiring. Has Becky Lynch retired from wrestling? I've been I seeing, recently noted an Instagram post. Yeah, I've been seeing this post all on social media, so I wasn't sure what was going on. From Lynch that some fans believe was a hint that she's stepping away to focus on motherhood. And now Fightful Select Sean Ross Sapp is reporting on the latest talk in the WWE. Sapp states that he reached out to sources close to the situation and WWE sources were under the belief that Lynch wouldn't announce her retirement with just a social media message. No, Nonetheless, of another source reportedly told Sapp that Lynch is no longer under a WWE contract and could do whatever she wants. Do you think she has retired? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, W. I think she's just taking a break, which honestly, I think I don't think anyone would complain because I, I I feel like fans had gotten burnt out on Becky. Um, just her character and gimmick, it had reached its run. I think it's perfect for her to focus on her family, chill, relax. You know, there's no need to rush it either. You know what I'm saying? Like right now. They're doing some stuff with the women's division, and the big focus is Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley, as it should be. You know, now on the SmackDown side of things, uh, you got Nia Jax, and what they plan on doing with Tiffany Stratton is to be seen. But I don't think they need to rush it. I think she just need to focus on her family, focus on her health, and just enjoy her life. She, I think she's earned earned some time off just to kind of decompress and live life and enjoy it. You know, so um, it. It will be one of those things when if she ever does return or she does decide to return, it'll be a huge moment. So I think that's something, uh, you know, she deserves to have that that opportunity to just kind of relax and enjoy her, enjoy her life. WWE considering international rules? Could the mm. WWE fans attending international PLEs get to see SmackDown and Raw when the WWE comes to town? Mm. Pro Wrestling Nexus is reporting, as reported in PW Nexus yesterday on the Discord, WWE has discussed moving Raw to being taped on a Sunday following an international PLE, oh. i.e. Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia. This new format would give talent more time to recoup and recover rather than flying and rushing straight back into television. Yeah. We're told that this would mostly be for international sake if they do decide to carry forward with this idea. I repeat, this is not cleared or approved as of this writing. The idea makes sense on paper, not only for yeah. logistical purposes, but because the WWE may be able to squeeze money out of its already lucrative international shows. Next up, a top team leading- Hell yeah. If they had a show, for example, say, you know, they had Backlash, right? They had Backlash, it was on that Saturday in France. Amazing crowd. That Sunday, they don't do nothing, or maybe that Monday, you know, they have a show on that Monday in Lyon, France, a Monday Night Raw in Lyon, France. That crowd would be electric, and they would be able to charge whatever the hell they want for a Monday Night Raw because they know they don't get that. Yes, it would be taped. It would be taped for us, obviously, but I don't think it would be a problem. I think it would it'll make those Monday Night Raws a little bit special to have those shows in these different cities that normally don't see Monday Night Raw at all. So I'm okay with it. If they do that, it helps with the logistics. The wrestlers don't have to worry about getting back so soon. I'm okay with that. And I think it would just it would show a little bit better these foreign shows on these foreign Monday Night Raws. The crowd would be 
different than what it is, you know, when they come back to the States. So AEW for WWE. It looks like the rumors of one of AEW's top tag teams exiting the promotion are true. Wrestling Purist recently tweeted, according to multiple AEW sources, heard about the Lucha this. Brothers are expected to leave AEW when their contracts expire this year. Some sources speculated that they were heading to WWE. Some claimed it was a formality. They were originally planned for an AEW World Trios title match at Wembley, but plans have now changed. The Lucha Brothers are one of AEW's most exciting tag teams mm -hmm. to watch and had some epic matches as a tag team as well as with fellow Death Triangle member Puck in the Trios competitions. While injuries have sidelined the group, they haven't always been used well. And finally, yeah. a WWE fan kicked out of Raw. Last but not least, Raw was a phenomenal show, but apparently it wasn't enough to entertain one attendee. Ringside News reported, The show took place at the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, and as revealed by footage making rounds online, an intoxicated fan was getting violent with security and had to be escorted out of the building. The man was lunging at security before security personnel subdued him and took him outside the arena and restrained him. The man is also telling the security to call 911 in a drunken stupor. While this type of behavior is certainly not limited to wrestling events, it's still a bad look and one that points fans in a bad light. But there you have it, folks. I will look up Raw as well as... I didn't even know it was a thing. <laughs> you know, I, I I did not even know that was a, a situation. But they handle it as they should. That's why they have security in these places. That's why they pay these companies for the security to make sure, hey, everything's good. Everybody's safe. If someone's get got a little too drunk and need to be escorted out, you do. Hey, if you go to these shows, don't get hammered like that. You can, it's cool. Get you a couple of drinks. Enjoy the show. Have a good time. But don't be going out there getting super drunk and embarrassing yourself and whoever you're with. Because you may end up in jail. Or you may end up banned from all wrestling events. You don't want to be that guy. So just go out there. Enjoy yourself, man. But comment down below. Let me know some, some other videos y'all want me to check out. Appreciate all the love support y'all showing on the channel. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See you on the next one. Peace.